All right, Shalom to the elect. I want to start by giving all the praises, honor, and glory to whom it rightfully belongs, which is Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Akakwadash. Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father. Yahweh is the one of the world ignorantly calls God. Yah means he. Hawa means to be or exist. So Yahweh's name means he is or he to be or he exists. All right. Yahweh is not a so-called white man. He's a so-called black man. Bahashem means in the name. Ba means in, ha means the, and shum means name. So, like, and Yahweh Shai is the true name of the Messiah. Right? Yahweh Shai so like, is the one of the world ignorantly calls Jesus, with Yah meaning he, and Yahweh Shai meaning save or deliver. So, Yahweh Shai's name means he is the savior or he is the deliverer. Okay? And Yahweh Shai also is not a so called white man, he's a so called black man. But Hashem, once again, meaning in the name, and Rachakwadash meaning Holy Spirit. Rakal meaning spirit and Kodash meaning holy. So I said all the praises, honor, and glory belongs to Yahweh in the name of Yahweh Shai, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Double honesty, apostles, and elders of Great Millstone, every well. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the elect. And this lesson, okay, you know, I'm all, uh, you know, it's based off of these two words I found in um, a previous lesson I did, all right? You know, going into the, um, origin of the word when I looked it up. All right, so the two words that I'm going into the origin of etymology of is incinerate, and the other one is trajectory, okay? Now, with this word incinerate here, all right, when I had looked it up, all right, it's a verb, destroy something, especially waste material, by burning. And then it gives an example, such garbage must be incinerated at the hospital, okay? So incinerate means to destroy something by burning it, okay? That's what that means. Now, when you look at the origin down there at the bottom, this is late 15th century from medieval Latin, incinerat, burnt to ashes. From the verb incinerare, from in, meaning into or towards, a sinus or center, meaning ashes. So, into ashes, okay? And that's what the Lord is going to do, all right, to these people in America, to these two thirds, okay, and I'm gonna start off with the first scripture. This is <clears throat> this is the book of Zechariah, chapter fourteen and verse twelve. And this shall be the plague wherewith Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth, okay? And an example of that is Sarah Connor from Terminator, all right? When she was on the gate being burned, all you got to do is go to Google, type in Sarah Connor, Sarah Connor Terminator gate burning scene, you know? And that's going to be a reality. This is, this is in the Bible, okay? You know, because the nuclear missiles, you know, is what's going to do this. Okay, the nuclear because you have something called intercontinental ballistic missiles, all right, which are gonna issue fire. See, so you gotta ask yourself, what what would be used to make someone's flesh burn off of them while they stand upon or consume away while they stand upon their feet, you know, or their eyes consume away in their eye sockets and their tongue and their mouth, you know, you gotta ask yourself, what what instrument can do this what type what thing can do this okay let me just look at that word consume all right let's just see what it says this is the word consume in Zechariah 14 and 12 the Hebrew word for is makwak it says the decay pine away rot fester all right, let me see what pine away means. To become thin and lost. It's like to become thin and weak because of status loss. No. All right, he's not talking about that. All right. I just wanted to see what it would say. Huh. Right here it says a primitive root to melt. All right. To melt, yeah, and and it dissolve. So 
See? So the new... Hold on. You know? So the nuclear missiles are going to melt. You know? That's, that You, you got to think. What would be used to be able to do that? To incinerate somebody. Turn them into ashes. Because the end result of all of that is going to be them being ashes. Okay? Now, when you look at a nuclear missile, okay, it's, um, you know, one, it, it, it produces fire, okay? Fire burns, all right? Are you, once again, look up Sarah Connor. You know what? I'll do it, okay? In case anyone does, in case anyone doesn't, but Sarah Connor, Terminator, Gate scene. See? This is her burning up. In the midst of her burning up. This is her right here. You know? You you have to ask yourself, like, what, what could do that? You know? What, what instrument could do that? When I say instrument, I'm talking about, like, a musical instrument. You know I mean? Like, a... A thing, you know, like what, what thing can cause this to happen to somebody, you know. And the answer is nuclear missiles, you know. That's what that's what causes, you know. That will. Let me not say that's the only thing that causes fire, but, you know, it produces fire. This is the book of Joel, chapter two, and verse three. A fire devoured before them. And them is talking about the missiles, and um, that fire is talking about that uh. It's name that fire that comes from that nuclear warhead. That's what it's talking about. And behind them, a flame burneth because on the back part of the missile, all right, you know, it um has the fire, you know, which, you know, like the blast off, all right, that fire. It says the land is as the Garden of Eden before them, right? Because before the nuclear missiles hit, it says before them, all right, before the nuclear missiles hit, you know, you know, the land is going to be as what? It's going to be regular, you know, cars. It's business as usual. People going up down the street, cars roaming, you know, here and there, you know, driving up in the street, you know, driving up and down the street. Okay. You know, <clears throat> everything going to be intact before America, it's like before the nuclear missiles hit America. It says, yay. It says, slack. it says, and behind them, meaning after them, a desolate wilderness. So after the missiles hit, it's going to be just like a desert, man. All right, because America is going to, you know, that's what it's going to turn it to. You know, let's talk about nuclear missiles, man. The Lord going to overkill America. OK. You know, it's going to America going to end up being like one huge desert. All right. Yeah, nothing shall escape. You got people roaming around. All right. After the missiles hit, you know, in America, you ain't going to have people roaming around over here, man. You know. So. The point was really in the beginning where it says a fire devoured before them because the, um, you know, the fire, the fire comes from a nuclear warhead, you know, and, and that's going to, and they're going to be shot. Okay. On America. All right. Let me get that real quick. You know, pretty much they're going to be shot from one end of the earth to the other. This is the book of second Ezra, chapter 16 and verse 13 for strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow. The bow is talking about the nuclear silo, okay? Let's let's get some imagery here, okay? Let's look at a bow and arrow, or or arrow in bow, okay? Now, let's use this as an example, right? You see how the arrow, it sits in the bow, okay? And even if you just turn your screen to where the bow and arrow points up, you know? The, the the arrow is sitting in the bow. Now, when you look at a nuclear, you have something that's called a nuclear silo, right? You see? The 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 missile, all right, the, the missile, it sits in the nuclear silo. See, so in the nuclear silo is that thing, you know, is the thing that the missile is sitting in, as you see right here, you know? So that's the bow. The nuclear silo is the bow. Okay? 
And then it says, so you can guess what the arrow is. It says, for strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow. And his it says his arrows, you know, which is what? You know, the thing that's, you know, the, the, the missile, okay? It's like we saw, you know, in the bow and arrow, the arrow, okay? That's what is going to, you know, be shot. If you have a bow and arrow, that's what would be, that's what would be shot and, hit, and, you know, to hurt somebody, right? Or something, okay? That would be shot to hurt someone or something, right? So, likewise, with a nuclear missile. You know? Let me get it again. You know? Likewise, with a nuclear missile, you see? The missile is the arrow, okay? It says... His arrows that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world. And that's, you know, why you have the term intercontinental ballistic missile. Brothers break this down a lot. I'm just typing ICBM meaning. Because you hear brothers say it, but do you know what it's talking about? ICBM meaning, all right, an intercontinental ballistic missile. Let's just look at the... I don't have to read the whole thing as it just said. Uh, see, intercontinental relating to or traveling between continents. In America, North America is a continent, okay? And the nuclear missiles are destined to, to hit in North America, okay? That's the term ICBM. And the thing is, they have to be shot, Okay. They got to be shot. And that brings me to the second word I wanted to bring out here, which is trajectory. Now, it says trajectory, noun, plural trajectory is the path followed by a projectile flying or an object moving under the, under the action of given forces. And it says the missile's trajectory was preset. All right. When you go down to the origin at the bottom, it says late 17th century from modern Latin trajectoria. Feminine from Latin traject, meaning thrown across. From the verb tricere, from trans, meaning across, and jacere, meaning to throw. Okay? Yeah, so to throw across. So it's like these missiles are going to be thrown across, you know, thrown across the world. Okay? You know, because when you look at a missile, you know, this is a good picture. You know, it gets launched, you see, from point one, all right, and it goes up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then it comes back down eight, you know? It hits. Eight is when it hits seven, you know, five and six and seven when it starts to come back down, and eight is when it hits, okay? And the scriptures call that, you know, the scriptures call that, you know, them leaping. The book of Joel, chapter two. And verse five, like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains. See, because noise the because the nuclear missiles, when they get shot off, they fly through the air making that sound. Okay? Listen to a you know, nuclear you know, a missile flying through the air making that sound, man. You know the sound it makes. It says, but it says, like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap. Okay? Shall they leap? Which a leap is a jump. Just like you jump up and come back down with a missile, they're gonna Get shot, climb altitude, and then come back down and hit their target. Okay? That's the trajectory. And they're going to see they're going to be getting thrown across, you know? You want to say it like that. You know, they're going to be getting thrown across from one point of the world to the other. Okay? You know? And the warheads, you know, you, you know, do damage, man. I believe that's the I believe that's the point in the missile that does the damage. You even got it here, right here, you know. It says, you know, it breaks down the phases. It says the launch, then the boost phase. The main boosters burn out. Then that launch once again, and behind them a flame, uh, behind them a flame burneth. All right, as the main boosters burn out, mid course phase, re-entry, terminal phase, impact. Okay, and you see the impact is the fire. So all these connect up together, man. You know, the nuclear missiles. Which after, you know, it goes its course of trajectory, all right, it's going to land and hit, you know, which is going to cause people to be incinerated, okay? Which is Zachariah 14 and 12, being, you know, pretty much, you know, when I say incinerated, you know, because incinerate means turned into ashes, 
okay? Which that's going to, once again, be the end result of Zechariah 14 and 12 for the people who have to experience that. Lord willing, I don't got to experience that. I, de I definitely don't want to experience that, okay? But, you know, for those that do experience it, all right, you know, that's going to be the end result. See, they're going to get incinerated and the Lord is the one that's going you know, cause these missiles to hit. And somebody will say, well, what about our defense system? Well, America's defense system ain't going to work. It's the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 8. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk everyone in his path. Okay? Here's the point. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. Yeah, America's missile defense systems ain't going to be able, you know, to stop the nuclear missiles. Because if it, if it was, how would, how would prophecy come to pass? This is a part of prophecy. All right. This is a part of prophecy. OK. And we know the Lord don't lie. Numbers chapter 23, verse 19, and it says, Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good? All right. So the Lord don't lie. Some point blank period. All right. And. So that means the Lord don't lie, and it's and it says when they fall upon the sword, they should not be wounded. Meaning, the, the America's missile defense systems won't work against the missiles. Okay, then America is slated for destruction. It tells you, it tells you this all over the scriptures, man. You know, from Revelation, you know, the New Testament to the Old Testament it tells you America is going to be destroyed. Okay. That's, that's just where America is going. It says, and goes into perdition. All right? America is finished. It's through. It's just only a matter of time. And with that, hold on. Let me just check something real quick before I get that scripture. Um, yeah. Okay, this is the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2 and verse 3. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. The vision, you know, the prophecy, what? Pretty much when the prophets saw these things, okay, these different prophecies, all right, it wasn't for the time period that they were living in, okay? You know, but the vision, you know, going into the prophecy, like what? How shall I return the nuclear missiles, you know, the Father's kingdom? All right, it says, the, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, so it's supposed to happen at a certain scheduled time. And we're getting close to that time. But at the end, it shall speak and not lie. So it says, not lie. So, hey. We just went through that. The Lord is not a man that he should lie, man. You know, the prophecies don't lie. Okay. These are the Lord's prophecies. So, you know, so if the prophecies were to fail, you know, you know, that would mean the Lord, you know, I don't even want to say that, but you get what I'm saying. Okay. But so the this this has to come to pass. It's going to. All right. You know, there's been prophecies that have already happened. For example, the, you know, the curses coming upon us, us getting shipped, you know, to America, slavery. That's written in the Bible. All right. So, you know, it happened. So the Lord's words is true. So the rest, so all of it has to happen. The rest of it, America being, you know, set on fire, being destroyed, man. And matter of fact, I'm going to come right back to this, Lord, because I meant to get this earlier. This is the book of Amos, chapter 9 and verse 8. It says, Behold, the eyes of the Lord, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh, Shah, are upon the sinful kingdom. That's America. It says, And I will destroy it from off the face of the earth. How? By way of those ICBMs. You got to understand the damage a nuclear missile can do. Let me just type that in real quick. See how much damage a nuclear warhead can cause. All right, because in the scripture Revelation 9, it tells you, I heard the number of them 200, it's pretty much 200 million warheads. All right, it says short term effects a single nuclear weapon can destroy a city and kill most of its people. Several, but here's the thing if it's going to be 200 million, that's the whole of America. <laughs> okay, yeah, that, 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 that's more than just you know. That, that's more than just um, most, okay? It says a single nuclear weapon can destroy a city and kill most of its people. 
Several nuclear explosions over modern cities would kill tens of millions of people. See, it's just several will kill so many people. It says casual, and I saw, I saw another article somewhere, you know, I was reading it, all right, you know, and pretty much it was saying the impacts of nuclear blast, you know, people would, what, they people would get incinerated, you know, that's where I got that word from, and also, they would, uh, you know, get their bones broken, you know, so nuclear, <laughs> nuclear weapon is, whew, man, all right, it says casualties from a nuclear, from a major nuclear war between the U.S. and Russia would reach hundreds of millions. What if we nuke a city? All right. How many miles could a nuclear, how destructive are warheads? Our nuclear warheads, a nuclear weapon will cause great destruction, death, and injury, and have a wide area of impact. People close to the blast site could experience injury or death from the blast wave, moderate to severe burns from heat and fires. See? These nuclear weapons, they made to be used one time, and after that, never again. All right, I tell you that, you know. And Joel too, okay, it said, um, roughly paraphrasing, uh, there hath not been ever the like, neither shall there be any more after it to the years of many generations, okay. But Amos 9 and 8, behold, the eyes of the Lord, Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah, are upon the central kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth. You could take a look at America around you now, it's gonna be destroyed. America, you want if you want to see the future of America. Pull up the picture of a desert. That's America's future. Okay? So saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith Yahweh. Alright? So the Lord is not going to completely destroy all of Israel. He's going to leave a righteous remnant. Okay? But, um... You know, the elect, they're going to be in a chariot, man. They're going to get beamed up. See? They're not, they're going to, they're not going to have to experience the nuclear, the nuclear destruction. A.K.A. the second death. They will not have to experience that, all right? They're going to be in a chariot above the firmament, you know, in new bodies, perfect bodies, righteous bodies, okay? Watching the destruction, okay? Watching the nuclear destruction, you know? So let me get Habakkuk again. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 3. For the vision and see, that's, you know, they they get delivered, you know, and the elect are looking for, looking to get delivered, so... You know, because this kingdom will be over the, the wickedness, you know, that, you know, wicked, you know, pretty much your house shy will return, you know, we'll be back by then. OK, and beam up his elect, you know, because when this day comes, you know, hey, it's written that it's, it's written that the elect are going to get beamed up when this day comes. You know, when the missiles are shot on America, it's written that the elect will be beamed into the chariot and saved from the nuclear destruction, you know. Not only the elect in America, but, you know, the, all of the elect from all over the world are going to be beamed up into the chariot. Okay? You see? But, um... Yeah, man, so, you know, people be wondering, you know, why are we looking for this day? Because, you know, we want to get delivered out of here. All right, so Habakkuk 2 and 3 for the vision is yet for an appointed time. All right? So, even this prophecy about the nuclear missiles... All right, this is going to happen at a certain time, a certain scheduled time the Lord has it set to happen, and we're coming close to that every, every single second of every single day. All right, and the, the time is moving by fast. It's, it's February going into March of 2024. I right, says, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, though it might take a bit long, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. So you got to be patient. We have to be patient. Okay, and wait, because it's going to happen. All right, so, yeah, man, you know, I wanted to go into the words incinerate and trajectory, and that's something, incinerate. Let me just look it up in the Edamon, Edamon line. Um, incinerate. Yeah. It says burn, burn to ashes. Translated in the 1550s from medieval Latin incineratus, password principle of incinerare, it reduced to ashes from in meaning into, and a verb from Latin sinus <clears throat> meaning ashes. So into ashes, you know. Yep, and that's where they're gonna go. You know. Oh, actually, it's like I meant to get this one as well. 
This is the book of Revelation, the 11th chapter. And right to the point in the 13th verse, in the same hours, there a great earthquake. I'm talking about that nuclear destruction. Isaiah 24 and 20, the earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard. Nuclear missiles are going to cause the earth to shake. All right, when it hits, it says when this day comes, it says in the 10th part of the city fell. And the city's talking about America in the 10th part. The 10th part, really, when you look at that word 10th, it goes into meaning 10. All right, because America is divided up into 10 FEMA regions. All right, so it says in the 10th part of the city fell. You know, so really, it said like the 10 parts. All right, so all, meaning all of America is going to be destroyed. All right, by these nuclear missiles. It says in the, in the earthquake and in the nuclear destruction, were slain of men 7,000, right? 7,000 just means, it just means completion, all right? So pretty much in the nuclear destruction, anyone standing on the soil, you know, pretty much when those missiles hit America, anyone standing on the soils of America are going to be destroyed. When the nuclear missiles touch down, all right? You know, start because the elect are going to be in a chariot, all right? By the time the missiles, you know, um, you know start killing people out here and destroying people, the elect are going to be in a chariot. All right, but as for those people that's still, you know, that's left down here, okay, on the soils of America, when the missiles hit, yeah, it's over with, over with, okay, just destroy, you know, ain't nobody gonna be left standing here in America, okay. It says in the remnant were afraid and they gave glory to the power of heaven, all right. So, yeah, man. All right, them nuclear missiles, they're going to be shot off, going to go through their tra trajectory and come down, all right, and um, it's, it start incinerating people. All right, so hey, with that, I want to give all the praises, honor, and glory to whom it rightfully belongs, which is Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rechak Wadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, that well, peace, blessings, and salutations to the elect. Peace, which in Hebrew is Shalom, so Shalom to the elect.